Hello, beautiful crafting fam, and welcome back to Victoria's Creations. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Vicki, and I will be your crafting hostess for today. Today's video is all about sublimation on glass. We are going to be sublimating on Dollar Tree cutting boards. Now, I really have to be honest with you. I just recently found out that these are cutting boards and they're not pot holders because I always thought they were pot holders, but they're not. Today, we are going to sublimate on the cutting boards. So if you're excited and you're ready to get started, join me at my crafting table. I'll go over everything that you're gonna need and then we'll get started. For today's project, you're going to need Dollar Tree's glass cutting board, scraper tool, Cricut spatula, Oracle 651 permanent vinyl, pencil, hand towel or paper towel, Cricut heat press mat, butcher paper or parchment paper, rapid tack, heat resistant tape, your designs, optional Cricut cutting machine, I used my Explore Air 2, or you can use a pair of scissors, heat press. If you're ready, I'll show you where you can find your sublimation designs and we can begin. Step 1. Get my free sublimated glass cutting board designs file. To get the design, go to Victoria's Creations Vault. Enter the password to access the vault. The password can be found at the bottom of every email I send out. Look for design 012 sublimated glass cutting board design. Click it and download it to your device. Step two, preparing your designs. To prepare your designs, find the sublimated glass cutting board designs folder on your device and open it. I've included four designs in the sublimated glass cutting board designs folder. Gnome Sweet Gnome, Hanging With My Gnomies, Kiss Me I'm Irish, and Luck of the Irish. Choose which one you want to sublimate or choose all if you want to sublimate them all and open them up. If you want to further personalize your cutting board designs, you will want to open them in a program that allows you to modify PNG files. I like to use Canva when I want to add text to any of my images. To add text in Canva, you want to first upload your design. So create a design. For these PNG files, you can create just a letter size, which is your standard eight and a half by 11. Upload your designs by clicking the upload button. You can either drag and drop your files in or you can click upload to locate your files. Once you're file has completely uploaded. You can add it to your device. It changed the size to 11 by 8 and a half and stretch your design out until it fits. And your design should fit the entire sheet just like mine has. Click on the text box. You can either choose from what they have here or you can just click add text box. Add your text. Choose your font and you can even turn the name so that it's sideways if you like. Once you have it the way you want it, click share, download, and download. Make sure you're on PNG still and click download. Once you have downloaded your new design or if you choose not to add extra personalization or any personalization to your design, now you want to make sure to print. Step three, printing out your design. When printing out your design, make sure that you are using your sublimation printer. If you're like me, you have a printer for normal printing and you have a printer for sublimation. If you use the printer for the normal printer, you're not going to have what you need to actually sublimate. So make sure you're using your sublimation printer. I have my settings all preset for sublimation. Make sure you have your settings set up for the best possible um, print quality. Now, however, when you are sublimating, on the glass, Dollar Tree glass cutting boards, make sure that you have your features on your features. Make sure you have your mirror image turned off. Normally for sublimation, you have mirror on, but because these images are coming through the back of the cutting board, they're coming through, you're not going to mirror them. If you mirror the image or if you forget to turn the mirror image off, your design will be backwards. Once you make sure your mirror is off, Load your sublimation paper into your printer and click print. Okay, 
Step four, prepping your glass cutting boards. The first thing you need to do with your glass cutting boards is to take off the little legs off the back. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but there's always four little legs on the back and you just take your spatula and you very gently go underneath and just pop them up. Set them to the side because we will be putting these back on when we are done. Once you have them off, you will notice that you still have some of the sticky residue on the back. That's not an issue. You can take and go run some water on those and it'll come right off. I'm gonna go and get the sticky stuff off under the water and then we'll get started taken the residue that's left on these is very easy to do it doesn't take long i think it took me less than two minutes to do when you get them done dry them really well and then you'll notice one side a little rough the other side very smooth the smooth side that's the side we're going to work with work with one at a time before you put anything on your cutting boards you must first trace out so to speak your designs to make sure you line it up when it's time to apply the designs because once you put the oracle 651 on here the permanent vinyl on here you're not going to be able to see through which is going to make it hard to line up your design if you do not have any kind of of mark going on. So we're going to take the two designs, these two designs, circle one first, lay it down and kind of center it up. Once you have it centered good, make a couple marks with your pencil. And that's just going to let you know where you need to place your cutting board once you have your vinyl on here. You understand what I mean once we get the vinyl on here. Do the square. On the square ones, just go around the corners. to the side. Now remember we are working on the smooth side, not the rough side. You need your Oracle 651. Right before we do this part, this is where your Cricut comes in handy or your scissors depending on how you want to do it. You want Oracle 651 is going to go on the back side. So you're going to want to cut it out so that it goes on here. This is how it'll look, roughly. I used my Cricut machine to cut these out, but you could also trace, as, trace it out and then cut it out. It looks a little lopsided because when I put my 651 on the mat to be cut, for whatever reason, I put, I put the vinyl on the mat like this instead of like this. So of course, the vinyl part didn't get cut. The backing got cut. <laughs> so I had to very carefully cut it out the best I could with my scissors but it'll still work. Make sure that you don't make a blunder like I did. Make sure that you put your vinyl with the this side down on your mat. Okay we are fixing to attach the vinyl to the cutting board. This is where you need your paper towel or your hand towel. Smooth side. If you do not have rapid tack, I highly suggest that you get some. This is great for applying your oracle on your mat. I mean, sorry, not on your mat, on your cutting board. This is what professionals use to apply decals to vehicles and such. It's so you can still move this around to get it exactly where it's supposed to be before it sets. So take your vinyl off of its backing. Take your cap off. You're gonna do a light coat. 
And then I also do a light coat on the actual vinyl. Make sure you do it on the sticky side, not on the other side. And you're going to lay it down on the smooth side. And you're gonna move, apparently I didn't get it. If it doesn't move, then you don't have enough on there because your vinyl should, you should be able to move your vinyl where you need it. See how it moves? want to get it as close to the edge as you can. Once you have it exactly where you want it, take your squeegee, start from the center, and you're going to squeegee all the excess out. Make sure you have it exactly where you want it because once this sits, it is where it's at. You want to pat dry the top of it just to kind of get all the excess off of there as well. So this to the side for about 30 minutes, giving it time to dry. And we'll move on to the next one. Make sure, again, you are working with the smooth side. I like to try to make sure there's nothing on the glass before I start. And let this one set for 30 minutes as well. Step five, apply your designs on your glass cutting boards. Our cutting boards have set for 30 minutes, so they are good and dry. Now it is time to place our cutting boards on our designs. This is where having the markings that we put on our designs comes in handy. Flip your cutting board over and as you can see, you cannot see your design anymore because we have the oracle on the back side. So this is where you line it up with your markings. Once you have it lined up, apply your heat resistant tape you do not want this to move so I'm going to put one in each corner so to speak because you know circles don't really have corners slide that one to the side and we'll do the same thing on our square line it up with your markings and on all four sides And I just fold those over. And to prep your heat press, the first thing you need to do is obviously turn it on. Set your temperature for 385. Set your timer for 190 seconds. Now, the first thing we need to do, we need this bottom to be as hot as the top. I've already turned mine on, but now we're going to do a dry run or a prep run. I'm going to close with nothing in it but my butcher paper or one layer of butcher paper, close it and let it run for the duration of the 190 second and then we'll place our cutting board inside. Once the timer goes off, now it's time to place our designs in. Now, normally when you put your designs in for sublimation, you have the design on top and whatever you are sublimating underneath. That's not the case for the glass cutting board. In the glass cutting board, you're gonna put the design on the bottom. Be very careful because it is very, very warm. Your design on the bottom and you're going to cover it with your butcher paper or your Teflon sheet, depending on what you're using. 
warm. Be very, very careful. And you're going to let it run for 190 seconds. with pressure. Don't forget when this is done, you will need your heat resistant gloves. I forgot to mention this in the beginning of this video, but you do need heat resistant gloves. Before I take it off, I'm gonna check it. Heat resistant gloves first, because this is going to be warm. I think it turned out pretty good. Okay, the top of your pan, and remember, we don't reuse we cannot reuse our butcher paper. Take your first design off, do away with the butcher paper, apply your next sheet of butcher paper and put your next design. Remember face down. I try to get it centered. Don't forget. Put your paper on top or you can use Teflon paper. Is it Teflon or parchment paper? I think it's Teflon paper. I always use butcher paper, so I don't really remember. But I think it's Teflon paper. But Put your sheet on top and you're going to press for another 190 seconds with pressure. Not too bad. When your design is done, you want to place it on your mat. Let it cool off. You do not want to try to peel it just yet. We will go over that as soon as this one is done and they have both had time to cool off. I will show you what to do. Now that this one is done, I'm gonna go ahead, turn my heat press off. Remember, do not try to pick these up with your bare hands because they are hot. Don't forget also when you're sublimating, make sure you are in a well ventilated area because of the fumes. Once your cutting boards have cooled completely down, you can touch them with your hands without the heat, heat, re heat resistant glove. We're going to run a little bit of water over the back of them and then set them in water to soak for about two minutes. Then we'll be able to peel off the backing and take the any residence or any residue that is left from the paper and usually there's a little bit left we'll be able to take a little not a scrub brush but you can use the scrub part as long as it's not the metal scrub brush to get the remaining off the back of it Make sure when you are cleaning the backs of these, if the paper does not come off when you pull it off first time, the big sheet, that you have something in your in your sink, like a little strainer or something, to catch the pieces of paper that are coming off. Because essentially, that's what comes off of the back of these when you're running them underwater and you're cleaning them. It's not a film, this actual paper that's coming off. Once they are clean, make sure you dry them. And now it's time to put the back the feet back on these so you'll turn them back to the you'll see these are the this is the front this is the rough side turn it back over so that you are looking at the 
smooth side and you'll notice that your words are now backwards when you're looking at them. You take your feet and you just place them back on there. If you come across one that doesn't want to stick, it doesn't have any more stickiness on it, you can apply a small, I do mean small amount of um, super glue and that will get them to stay. You could also, if you lose any of these feet or if you just want to replace them, you can also purchase those online and they don't have to be in any kind of set, especially the circle ones. If they're not in like unison, it's fine. You're just wanting the feet back on them. Do the same with your square. And these are a little bit more just easier if you want to make sure that you have them exactly where they're supposed to be or unison, so to speak, because on the back is where they're supposed to be. It's easier on the square ones to pin to get them more unified, so to speak. I would not recommend putting these cutting boards in dishwasher, hand wash only. I also would not recommend putting anything, setting anything on top of them that is hotter than say four or five hundred degrees, um, because you don't want you don't want anything to getting the getting your sublimation off of there or messing up messing up your sublimation or messing up the vinyl that's on the back. If you do happen to lose, I think I said this already if you do happen to lose these or if you want something that looks a little different than the ones that originally come on your cutting boards you can purchase those online i've not so far i've not had any issues with getting these to stick back but if you do you can always like i said a little dab of glue nobody really sees the back side unless you're washing it really and truly if you decide that you want to do these just for decor you don't even have to put the backing on them the legs back on them if you are using them as cutting boards I said I highly recommend putting the back back on them so before I wrap up the tutorial on the cutting boards I wanted to I've been telling you guys for a little while now about how small my office is and how much room I'm really I really have to work in so I wanted to kind of give you guys a <laughs> it's gonna be a quick tour of my office of my recording room where I do everything until my studio is done because I have been telling you guys that I am going to show you so don't blink because this is gonna be quick okay I'm gonna do a little pan around Again, don't blink. You're gonna miss it. Miss it. <laughs> that is it. That is that is it. That is the space I have to work in. As you can see, it is not very big. I do the best I can with what I have. Um, as you see, it's, <laughs> it takes a little while to get these videos made because it was daylight when I started, but this is the same day. It just takes a little while for the process to go through. But as you can see, this is a small area, but it works for now. I'm actually able to make it work. Um, I will have a studio. You guys have kind of seen it a little bit and I will do a video on it um, once I get to where I can start putting it together and finishing it up. We'll do a video on it so you guys can see the progress or um, where it's at. So this is my office. This is where I do all my stuff very small room so sometimes it's not as easy to move my tables well i hope you enjoy this tutorial and i hope that it has inspired you to go out to dollar tree and create some of your own little cutting boards i don't know about you but i'm thinking make one for every holiday i'm trying to get you a close-up <laughs> there we go well until next time, remember to keep crafting your best life.